It's the dawn of a new era at the southern border with the end of Title 42. Tens of thousands of migrants now getting the green light to cross into the U.S. without restrictions that had been in place for three years. Now, communities both near and far from the border are declaring states of emergency. Bill Malusian, live in Brownsville, Texas. How does it look this morning, Bill? Well, Dana, I can tell you we were out here at midnight as Title 42 finally expired, though we never saw a large rush of migrants. Now it's daylight and we are waiting to see what the day brings. Take a look at this video last night. We were with a group of four Republican senators as they received a tour of the area here in Brownsville from the Border Patrol Union. They took us down to the main crossing area where we have seen thousands of people crossing in recent days. That area has now effectively been sealed off by the Texas National Guard with all sorts of razor wire. And we were with all of these senators as Title 42 dropped at midnight again, we did not see a huge expected rush. What we did see uh, was all the migrant camps across the river with all the migrants in them, with campfires going and music playing from across the river. Here's what Senator Ted Cruz had to tell me. There are 22,000 illegal immigrants right on the other side of Matamoros. They have fires going. They've had music going. They're partying because in a couple of hours, Title 42 is ending and all 22,000 are going to invade this country. And Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will be the last mile of the human trafficking network and take them to every city in America. Now, again, that huge predicted rush has not yet materialized, but that doesn't mean it's not going to happen at some point. There are still migrants, thousands of them in Mexico, uh, who have been gathering there. This is what we saw last night. We sent a photographer over to Matamoros. Migrants looked like they wanted to cross, but this is what they saw across the river. Texas National Guard, barbed wire. They're on a megaphone telling them not to cross. We saw one guy get in the water and make an attempt, but it was essentially a standoff all night. You see one guy finally makes it over, but Texas has taken a new posture. They are blocking people and they are not letting people in and the migrants were chanting and uh, again we just did not see a large rush last night uh, but there is a possibility it's going to happen here's why take a look at this last piece of video migrant shelters across Mexican border cities are still completely at capacity with migrants who have shown up there are tens of thousands of migrants in Mexico border cities who are still waiting they're essentially in a, a holding pattern right now title 42 is gone and now it appears these migrants are waiting deciding what they want to do next. So we're just going to be keeping an eye out on that. And back out here live, a major decision taking place last night. Late last night, a federal judge in Florida blocked the Biden administration from being able to do their mass parole releases of migrants. A parole release means they do not get a court date. They are instead asked to turn themselves into ICE within 60 days. The Biden administration had argued in court and said, we need this policy. If we can't have it, we're going to have 45,000 people in custody by the end of the month. Disease could spread because of overcapacity issues and there would be, quote, catastrophic consequences. Well, the federal judge came back and said, nope, you can't do it. This is largely a problem of your own making. We'll send it back to you. Bill, can I ask you, yesterday, Secretary Mayorka said something that he has said repeatedly, but it took on, I think, a, a additional significance as he said it yesterday. Listen here. I want to be very clear. Our borders are not open. People who cross our border unlawfully and without a legal basis to remain will be pr promptly processed and removed. How do the cartels listen to a message like that? Like, how do they react? Well, look, they, they, what they tell the migrants is if you get here, you have a very good chance of being released. And when Secretary Mayorkas says that if you cross illegally, you will be processed and quickly removed, you have to put an asterisk next to that. That is the case for some people. But right now, a, a majority of people are released into the country. What happens is because there's so over capacity and because of diplomatic relations with different countries, once people get here, they're typically released with an NTA, a future court date. And because of how backlogged everything Everything is that court date can be years down the road and the cartels are able to advertise off of that. The migrants know that they they told us that in interviews that if they can just get here, they believe they are going to be released. And if you just walk to downtown Brownsville right now, you'll go to the bus station and you will see Venezuelan men with their NTAs and their DHS packets and their government cell phones all over the place waiting to get on a bus to go elsewhere around the country. Mass releases are taking place yeah. and it is part of the Biden administration's policy. You are several hundred miles away from Yuma, Arizona. They did it yesterday for the first time in two years in that town. Now, in Brownsville, where you're located, 
That, that's where they put the concertina wire up this week. That's where Governor Abbott ordered a lot of other uh, officers to uh, respond along that river. Uh, it, it seemed to have stopped some of that flow. Has it? Yeah. Yeah, they've essentially plugged it up. Uh, the first few days I was here this week, I mean, you guys saw the drone images we were putting up. It was a free-for-all down here at this spot. Lines of several hundred people just crossing at will with zero resistance whatsoever. Then a couple of days ago, that specialized Texas National Guard response force showed up with riot gear and all sorts of razor wire, and they changed their posture. They are blocking people from entering now. We'd never seen them do that before. And these migrants are coming across expecting to be let in, and instead they're greeted by rows of razor wire and troopers standing there with their arms crossed saying, no, you're not coming in. So now they're likely going to have to try to find another area to cross and those cartels and smuggling organizations are going to have to take a minute to figure out how, mm. how, how to approach this. Are they going to find somewhere else to go? Texas only has a limited amount of resources, but it just goes to show the difference in posture between the state of Texas actively blocking people and the federal government, which sent troops down here essentially to do paperwork. Wow, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yo. So as y'all can see in the clip, we just posted. So this has been a big topic with um, Title 42. Has it expired? Did it expire today? Was yeah, that 1159 was Thursday night? Ah, yep. so that's why they were saying that bus loads, people are already waiting on the tech side with phones and they was ready to take them wherever because you know what that probably you probably have a lot of people that have crossed over now they like now i'm gonna be with my family that's over in the american side and it's um i mean you feel for people you know you know you have to be well, you don't have to be but i'm just saying you know em, you know empathy compassion but at the same time also the same thing goes on the other side for the yeah. country of the people who are citizens and, it, and live there. You, you still have to be empathetic and compassionate and look from from the, from their perspective. Absolutely. So I got this article from the Associated Press and it's all about current news. This was like data yesterday and it's kind of because I needed a little bit more information on what Title 42 was. But even at, at the very beginning of the article, it's saying that the U.S. is putting new restrictions into place at its borders at its southern border to try to stop migrants from crossing illegally and encourage them instead to apply for asylum online through a process and that's what i feel mm. you know, i feel like yeah oh so you could so there is a process to doing it mm -hmm. yep i'm thinking like it's so they said they can go online and apply for asylum. So the changes come with the end of coronavirus restrictions on asylum that have allowed the U.S. to quickly turn back migrants at the U.S.-Mexico border for the past three years. COVID era just ended. Those restrictions are known as Title 42 because the authority comes from Title 42 of a 1944 public health law allowing curbs on migration in the name of protecting public health. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And it says like the latest news, they gave these like really three bullet points. Border appears calm after lifting a pandemic asylum restriction. Here's what it's looking like. Well, this is like show, um, shows you kind of like what it's looking like at the border. But for those of you who want to know more about what file, what title 42 is yeah. and what. Um, Just like I do, had to. Just like this I had is to. According to the Associated Press, title 42 is the name of an emergency health authority. It was a holdover from President Donald Trump's administration and began in March 2020. The authority allowed U.S. officials to turn away migrants who came to the U.S.-Mexico border on the grounds of preventing the spread of COVID-19. Before that, migrants could cross illegally, ask for asylum, and be allowed into the U.S. They were then screened and often released to wait out their, immigrant, their immigration cases. Mm. Under Title 42, migrants were returned over the border and denied the right to seek asylum. U.S. officials turned away migrants more than 2.8 million times. Families and children traveling alone were exempt, but there were no real consequences when someone illegally crossed the border. So that's what it says, but if they, they still were able to. So asylum's one thing, but when you're just trying to jump across, that's a whole different game. So migrants were able to try again and again to cross on the off chance they, were, they would get into the U.S. So President Biden initially kept Title 42 in place after he took office, then tried to end its use in 2022. He did, yep. So Republicans he did sued. He did try. 
arguing the restrictions were necessary for border security. Courts had kept the rules in place, but the Biden administration announced in January that it was ending national COVID-19 emergencies, and so the border restrictions have now gone away. So Biden has said the new changes are necessary in part because Congress has not passed migration reform in decades. Yeah. So what's happening next? So you want to just stop there and kind yeah, of stop, talk yeah. about it, but then so, I, I want to read a little bit of that too. So I want to say, man, um, firstly, I sympathize. I'm a, from love. I sympathize for um, people that that really come from other dire situ, dire yeah. situations from other countries. Um, and bad situation life because that's pretty much they, overall. But, but I think that's the overall as far as people getting in the border. But uh, but the asylum situation has different reasons. That could be what it said. It said people people hide running from cartel, people prostitution. It's all kind of reasons. That's the downside but on of the it. asylum side, but. For the most part, the overall thing is a better life. Yeah. And what I want to say is, you know, there's a way to get in and there's a way not to get in. We always travel. We travel to other countries. We have to have the proper documentation. And that's going and coming. So to just be able to come over and you don't no telling your background. That's the truth. No telling your background. No telling what you had going on over there. No telling what your intention is once you get over here. And that's the tough part. And that's the part that per- no one can determine if you come in the wrong way. Yeah. And even if you come in the right way, you still can go and be willing to do harm. But it's a better way to track you. It's a better way to kind of see, you know, about to be able to find you and have justice if you are over here under documentation reasons do you get a social security number when you, when uh-huh. you get signed uh-huh. how long is, unless is it's a visa it? but I, I don't know if you have to have i think you still have to have some form of identification when you come here i don't know if they give you a temporary you know um social security number i don't know how like like what is entailed when they give you a visa it's some tracking system it of is course. it is so you have that you know card with i guess a number on it to identify and it goes with you as a person i'm, I'm sure it is so i mean so this is this is very interesting. I just, yeah, I do feel like it's going to make a massive flood of people rushing through. And on fourth, and and in that with that, you have the good and the bad. You have oh, people yeah. who want to come, start a new life, meet, get with family who's been over here, who's been working, trying to build them up and change the trajectory of their life and their family's life, which is a wonderful thing. And then the other side, you have the criminal mindset. And and, and you probably got some some millionaires in there that's that can go in. And, you know, and change some things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but the process is it should be a process, and it should be it done should. It the should right be done way. It's got to be done the right yeah, way. It should be done in a way where it's going to benefit everyone, and not just those that's coming in. And then people that are automatically paying taxes and living in a place are going yeah. to be the ones to that re- suffer. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah, you I have don't like to that. Re- catch the benefits and put more in taxes what, to what, be able to. What, what about the people? That live like on Brownsville. What about the people that have farms and stuff? And they're right there. I don't know. I I don't know. I don't know. But I do like the fact that they're they're taking a stance in Texas and saying, you know what? We gonna secure our our stuff over here because y'all ain't doing nothing about it. You know, and it's just sad. So so what's happening next? The Title Forty Two restrictions lifted at eleven fifty nine p.m. EDT Thursday. The Biden administration has put into place a series of new policies cracking down on illegal crossings. The administration says it's trying to stop people from paying smuggling operations to make a dangerous. That's messed up. And often deadly journey. That's cartel stuff. Now you want to do something after it's over versus being proactive. This is why I mean, I just I hate he ever got into office. I really and truly do. Now there will be strict consequences, so they say. Migrants caught crossing illegally will not be allowed to return for five years and can face criminal prosecution if they do. So these are the new asylum rules. Under U.S. and international law, anyone who comes to the U.S. can ask for asylum. So it's a long list um, yeah. here. You guys want to check it out. Send them, what's the link? What's the where, what's that? Too? Well, just it'll be in the description if you want to put it up. Okay. This is yeah, um, I, I will drop the Associated that in the Press. This dropped yesterday, and it's called Title Forty Two is ended. Here's what it did and how U.S. immigration policy is changing. Well, I'm gonna drop that link in the description so y'all can check it out <laughs> for those me. who want to inquire on more about that. And um, it's this is. 
it's it's on the one end it has some stuff where i sympathize on the other end it has some stuff that gonna be messed up so i just i don't know how to determine these kind of things and really even know don't know really need, know how to talk about these kind of conversations outside of just you need, i know for a fact you need coming the right way and that's the only thing i i do know so you know yeah and that's pretty much how i feel too yeah you know doing things the right way so everyone benefits yeah yeah Okay, that's man. It. That's why I painted. I, I don't know if y'all we weren't gonna attack it like that, but we were just trying to come to it, come through these situations humbly, um, and just uh, by my phone. Wanted to get a clear understanding of true, yeah. you know, what it is, and all the more reason as to why you need to really pay attention to who you vote for. Absolutely. And know, you know, specifically what there but you know he said he was down for it but then he switched it and that's the only that's the only the other thing on the polit on politicians yeah but there's still signs to let you know how a person you know how they moving for you to kind of zoom in maybe but, maybe not but i've learned but i've just learned for a fact that on the blue they looking for the minority that's their pop their their, their go-to they're not they're not looking for um um, certain groups they're looking for the minority so whatever they can cater to get the minority is what they go for and then the minority doesn't do their research we just go and fill the box and be like okay whatever but I've learned that conservative people do their research and they know why they're conservative whereas liberals don't know the, a shoestring from a, from a fingernail some so, do but you know it's few it's, few. it's, not, it's not, not a lot not a lot so know who you're voting for we know who we voting for but um like comment subscribe don't take a nose dive but comment down in the section below if you, if want, you want some, some more, more. Yeah. love you guys bye bye